point of privilege once again. Quick point of privilege once again. Hi, James Jackson, Sacramento DSA, he, him. I have already asked people to be mindful of the chatter of their comrades who are sensitive to sensory overload, and that goes double for the heckling and the hissing. It is also triggering to my anxiety. What you're seeing is children posing as a political party, otherwise known as the Democratic Socialists of America. As you can see, I'm wearing my red, communist red, socialist red, to show my support. A big party of privileged weirdos, rejects, I'm sorry, it's true, all complaining about being systematically held back by a fascist, yet capitalist government, somehow holding an event, an event that has been funded through capitalism. It's very existential like that. Think I'm being too cruel. Watch a clip. If we want to defeat capitalism, we are going to need a party that will organize working people to fight for the demands that we want and to win socialism. Thank you so much. Right, right uh, quick point of privilege. Quick um, point of personal privilege. Yes. Um, guys, uh, first of all, James Jackson, Sacramento, he, him. I just want to say, can we please keep the chatter to a minimum? I'm one of the people who's very, very prone to sensory overload. There's a lot of whispering and chatter going on. It's making it very difficult for me to focus. Please, can we just, I know it's, we're all fresh and ready to go, but can we please just keep the chatter to a minimum? It's affecting my ability to focus. Thank you. Thank you, comrade. Okay, is there a speaker against name, point chapter, pronoun? Privilege. Point of personal privilege. Yes. Please do not use gendered language to, to address everyone. Thank you, comrade. I can't stop laughing at that. To win socialism, it kind of sounds like it was written by a privileged teenager, because it might as well have been. This is a giant nursery of children running amok, demanding that they be treated the most special, with the few adults in the room having to quarrel them in, reel them in after recess. No gendered language, no triggering. And of course, there's way more rules than that also. First of all, in this room, I see that no one's clapping for me. It could be because I'm not engaging, but it also is because everyone's doing this. And that's really important because those loud bursts of noise, even though this is a noisy space, when we can do something like reducing that, that's really important. So please don't clap, shoot up these. You have to have your credentials at all time. We're not trying to be jerks, but there are um, right-wing infiltrators who are trying to get in here don't really talk to anybody who doesn't have a creden credential. Don't talk to cops. Don't talk to MAGA. <laughs> oh, we're almost there. There's also in Piedmont 8 a completely quiet room. One thing to note there, please don't go into that space with anything that's like an aggressive scent, for instance, right? Try to be chill, right? Take a deep breath. And feel better before you say anything. You heard it, no clapping, don't talk to anyone you disagree with. Also, of course don't talk to any cops that got some jeers and jaunts and claps. No aggressive sense. And of course, just be chill, bruh. What's the deal? Think, take a deep breath before you say anything. Don't forget your pseudo-communist fashion. I didn't. It's a big part of it, if you didn't know. But this next clip, this next one that I picked out, Let's try to take it more seriously. Uh, seriously! Uh, hi everyone, um, my name is Sam Lewis, uh, he, him, I'm from the New York City DSA chapter. Um, this very simple amendment is to strike the language about forming um, an independent party. Um, I want, in conversation with the authors of the proposal since, I think we're all um, in agreement that we do want to build a mass organization, political organization of the working class that vies for state power. So it's not uh, an attempt to um, get rid of that shared goal. Uh, the problem with the language as I see it is that it counterposes forming an independent working class party with the tactical use of the democratic line. So it's basically saying in the future we will break with um, our tactical use of the democratic line. I think many of us have an agnostic position on that question, right? We want to um, behave in the most strategic way as um, class politics in this country develops. We don't want to commit to what has historically been a failed strategy in the United States of forming a third party ballot line. So um, I consider this a, a friendly debate. Um, I will be voting for the uh, proposal whether or not this, um, this passes, uh, but I think it's important to discuss. Thank you. Now there is a point in there, if you can make it through the very sad and 
grotesquely over-apologetic way he asked the question, the way he deliver it, delivered it was so apprehensive to not offend anybody. But this guy doesn't want them to be, to be a party forever. He wants to break through the use of a democratic line, break the use of being a party and being part of this capitalist, fascist structure. What I think he's saying is he eventually wants the party, when it's big enough, to just no longer be a party and just take over, use their power of the working class to take over. Not use the failed strategy of becoming a third major party, probably because, probably because that will never happen. But why not? Why can't they gain power? There isn't a magic barrier preventing people from voting for them, for voting independent, voting Green Party, or anybody else that anyone wants to vote for. Not as far as I'm concerned, is there? No. The problem is that there's no incumbents, no candidates, no reasonable people. Now, I hear you when you say, what about Bernie Sanders? What about AOC? They're democratic socialists. Well, they are, but not officially. Officially, by party, they're Democrats. But why is that? Because they know being part of the Democratic Socialist Party wouldn't work. People do not like socialism. It gets rejected again and again, especially from people who have fled countries run by socialists or communists. Bernie and AOC care far more about power and perceiving to care than they do about actually being honest. Because being honest, they wouldn't even be in that party. Bernie's been a socialist since like the 60s or 70s. He could have just been the figurehead of the Socialist Party, but he's not. And he's not for a reason. Because socialism doesn't make him a millionaire. It doesn't make him have three houses. It doesn't make his wife become under investigation from the FBI for things. But when watching stuff like this, can you honestly blame people like AOC and Bernie for not wanting to be part of the party? Quick point of privilege once again. Quick point of privilege once again. Hi, James Jackson, Sacramento DSA, he, him. I have already asked people to be mindful of the chatter of their comrades who are sensitive to sensory overload, and that goes double for the heckling and the hissing. It is also triggering to my anxiety. Like, the be comradely doesn't ju isn't just for, like, you know, let's keep things civil or whatever. It's so that people aren't going to get triggered and so that it doesn't affect their performance as a delegate, okay? Your need to express yourself is important, but your need to express yourself should not trump or over, like, Yes, that's James from the first video, coming back to yell at people for being too chatty. Think about that. He's coming back and yelling at people for being too loud and making his sensory perception go off. It's brilliant to watch a bunch of people complaining about how special they are, therefore everything must and has to revolve around them at an event that's supposed to be for everybody. Adhere to my needs, okay? Yours don't matter, mine are the most important. And then 600 other people come up to the microphone and say why they're the most important. It's very obvious and sad. Sad in an obvious way. <laughs> the people running the show, they know that they've got a group of lemmings, a group of sheep running around. As long as they say their keywords, as long as they do the right thing, give trigger warnings, the people are going to adhere to them, offer some free stuff, and they're going to get what they want, which is power. White supremacy, patriarchy, fascism, etc. These are the things they need to say, and they'll be accepted, and they can push their agenda. One of those leaders is National Director Maria Svart. Suffer through a 20-minute interview with her, and you'll likely get no substance at all. Trust me, I have tried. A capitalist class, wealthy people are in control, and we need the workers to have power. No further explanation required. It works itself out, blah, blah, blah. You know the same thing. That's failed dozens of times. But if you go to the actual DSA website, that's where they go into a bit more details, albeit contradictory in, I don't know, three paragraphs, how long you have to read before it contradicts itself. On their about page under, hasn't socialism been discredited by the collapse of communism in the USSR and Eastern Europe, it reads, socialists have been among the harshest critics of authoritarian communist states. Just because they're bureaucratic, Bureaucratic elites called them socialists, did not make it so. Ah yes, the old, it's not really socialism claim, but we have the answer. We'll do it right. And it goes on. We applaud the democratic revolutions that have transformed the former communist bloc. However, the improvement of people's lives requires real democracy without ethnic rivalries or new forms of authoritarianism. No ethnic rivalries or authoritarianism. It sounds really good, except... 
if you read the rest of their website. If you go over to their leadership and structure page, you'll see that for such a socialist group, they have pretty specific requirements for their committee. DSA's primary political leadership is the National Political Committee, a 16-person body which functions as the board of directors. The DSA Constitution requires that eight slots of the NPC, irony here, cut back to me here, being called NPC, the most unintentionally hilarious part of this, now let's go back to it, <laughs> eight slots of the NPC be reserved for women and that at least five of the NPC slots be reserved for people of color, that dreaded word. So it seems to me, even if you're very qualified, very passionate, very knowledgeable, and you want to be on this committee, if you're the wrong skin color or the wrong gender, well then somebody less qualified could just come in and take your spot. Doesn't seem very anti-authoritarianism to me, doesn't seem very equal to me, definitely doesn't seem very democratic to me. In fact, it seems like you're placing people through means of authority. But this isn't a black caucus or a women's panel, is it? It's supposed to be equality for all doesn't sound very equal to me. Now what if somebody had a different organization that said we need to reserve spots for white men? It would probably be rightfully called out. But of course it makes sense to them though, doesn't it? Because equality doesn't mean treating everyone equal. It means punishing your perceived oppressors. Let's make things equal by getting back at everyone. Everyone that probably did nothing to you. But this perceived injustice that I have, we need to get back at our oppressors and make it equal by bringing them down. Not bringing ourselves up, but bring everybody else down to our standards. Believing their words not only requires blind faith, it requires cognitive dissonance. It's not racism, you're just using the wrong definition. Here's the correct one. This is a fascist government. You probably just don't realize it because you yourself are a fascist and a bigot. Gotta throw the bigot in there or else they don't understand. And that's why no one cares and that's why no one takes it seriously. It's all a big circle of contradictory definitions, and when something doesn't fit, something doesn't quite match up, it's because we're oppressed, and it's because you're a fascist, and it's because you just have the wrong de definition. So just chill out, okay? Be chill. Take a deep breath. Now if you take me seriously, please consider donating $1 per month to me on Patreon. Really stick it to those capitalist pigs. Even if you don't take me seriously, it's still good.